It's June 23rd and I wanted to make a video to show people who care, namely my grandparents, <laughs> Nana and Mama and Papa, all about my garden. And it's a good time because my children are either asleep or doing chores. <laughs> So, um, of course, these giant rose bushes I didn't plant, but everything down below that you see, I did plant. Um, so there's zinnias that I just deadheaded, but they're pretty, and some straw flowers that are about to start blooming, some apricot lemonade cosmos. I have much bigger ones next to the house. Some daisies and petunias and some more zinnias that, again, I just deadheaded. But um, they're just a mix of colors. This is a Japanese maple. This is all of my tomatoes. Well, actually, it's not all of them. It's some of them, though. I have German Johnsons. That was your recommendation, Nana. Opalkas. I have all kinds of paste tomatoes. There's a couple early girls. I think those are some of the only hybrids I'm growing. Um, random pot of potatoes back there. I've got peppers and uh, here's a Cherokee purple. Um, but I've, as you can see, I have quite a lot. I need to um, get my twine and do, see how I did that one? I need to do that with the rest of them that are against that wall. And then over here, um, I have in the shade on purpose some Chinese cabbage because it's kind of hot lately, even though it's not supposed to be, and some carrots that are just starting to, these need to be watered again, but some carrots that are doing their thing. These are called Uzbek golden carrots, and they're kind of short and fat, and they don't mind the heat, and these are Kyoto red carrots. These are carrots that I deliberately allowed to go to seed because I want to save the seeds. But they got um, attacked by aphids, so I had to cover them with diatomaceous earth. And uh, hopefully uh, that will have cleared out the aphids and I'll be able to harvest seeds from those soon. Here's some wildflowers just from one of those little wildflower packs that Teresa gave me. There's a few more there, some poppies. A couple more tomato plants, more zinnias, and a few... Um, Asian um, greens like mustards that I'm letting go to seed so that I can save seeds for those. This is a tomato my friend gave me. It looks a little sad, but it's uh, it's hanging in there. Eggplants, another tomato. I stuck some random things that I didn't have room for. Um, more tomatoes and in the very back are some sunflowers. This is a Rouge Vif de Tempe pumpkin. And I'm going to let it vine all the way up into this and all the way up into this because, um, yeah, because I can. <laughs> and then this is North Carolina Candy Roasters. This is, uh, I ordered this from a company in the mountains. Um, well, really, it's a farm, not even really a company. But it's, one, it's doing the best of any of my squashes. Isn't that funny? Um... There's a couple little North Georgia candy roasters too, but I started those later. I got a random little spaghetti squash I got for 50 cents from the grocery store. <laughs> um, and then let's see, another mound of potatoes that actually look really good, I'm excited. And then these are Sucrine du Barry butternut squashes. They're supposed to do okay in a cooler, more mild climate. So here's hoping that that ends up being true. Now I'm going into the backyard and I will show you, I have some radishes here that I'm deliberately letting go to seed so I can save some seeds. As you can see, that's started happening. And here I have, uh, I planted more Sucrine du Barry's there and they haven't germinated. I'm not sure why, but here I have Muscat de Provence pumpkins and, um, Moringa pumpkin. This is a Brazilian pink pumpkin. Both are supposed to be very good keepers and they're supposed to be very delicious. So here I have radishes that I'm letting go to seed uh, to save the seeds. I might pickle some of these seeds because I heard they taste good. 
zinnias that I've deadheaded, but they're starting to come back there. This is just sort of my wild area. Um, as I harvest things, I stick new things in. So there's some random little um, cabbages over there. Some blackberries, peas, um, a kabocha winter squash right there. Some rutabaga and some turnips that have gone to seed in the back, which is good. Um, some cabbages that are doing growing really quickly here. And then these are just herbs, yarrow, uh, bee balm, anise hyssop in the back, um, Moldovian balm and calendula, and then there's marshmallow right there. Uh, more, I think this is a rutabaga with some bad little cabbage moth eggs on it. I've gotten over my fear of bugs. I re regularly am out squishing them. Got lots of lettuces here. A lot of this looks sparse because it's been harvested and then replanted. So there's some cabbages there. There's a, a random cabbage here. You know, just kind of sticking things where they'll go. These rutabaga are really getting some good size on them. I'm excited about those. I, we like them roasted up and I'll fry up or cook the greens just like you would collards. They don't taste as good as collards, but they taste fine. Got another strawberry right back there in that strawberry box. Some kale, a random sunflower that came up and I just let it stay because I thought it was funny. That's something called corn salad that I learned to really love in Germany and I'm letting it go to seed. And then another Japanese green there that I'm letting go to seed. I got some basil, some lavender that I bought at the store. Oh, everything I got here, I grew from seeds unless you see a little tag. So there's two things maybe so far, the spaghetti squash and that, that I uh, bought. And then I bought these two basils here. Um, and then I have red sorrel, Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce. That has really impressed me. Do you know when I sowed that? In November. And it's still going. And it hasn't bolted yet. I think that one in the back back there is going to bolt soon. But I'm impressed. Here's some of that. Um, it's called like speckled trout for Schluss in German. Uh, romaine lettuce. It tastes really good. And then collard greens right there. Those are Vates collards. And then back here... I think that's another row of collards. I can't quite remember, to be honest with you. But back here, I've got some good turnips. Look at that. So I'm hoping to cook these up this weekend. Um, some of these turnips. So, the, you know, the bigger ones. And then I've got my summer squash here. Um, uh, these two are gray zucchinis. In the middle, I've got cocozelle striped zucchinis. And in the back, I have yellow squash. And then I've got a, a row of beans here that are being weird because uh, our weather is kind of weird for beans, but they're starting to kind of do their thing. More potatoes here that took over. <laughs> I didn't mean for them to, but they did. And then I've got um, really pretty nasturtium here and then purple cauliflower. And the leaves actually cook up really good and they have a light cauliflower flavor. And then these beans, and I made this... Um, trellis because I didn't want to spend much money. I was trying to be frugal and now I'm like mm, I should have gotten a nicer trellis than this. <laughs> but look at here. Look at that. These are Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans. But then back there I've got half runners and I have half runners somewhere else too. And then I cut this earlier. This was a nice little broccoli and I cut it and ate it raw. It was delicious. And here's some, some more broccoli. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Now you can see it. And uh then I have these poor cabbages, which actually I have a shade cloth here on my greenhouse. I might pull this over after I give y'all your little tour because they look a little sad. And uh, they're close, you know, they're close. They're starting to make their little heads, but I don't want them to bolt and go to seed since it's been a little warmer lately. Um, back there is old fashioned carnations, pink carnations that I started from seed. Here's dahlias. I started from seed. Um, you know, they're not as pretty as when you buy the tubers, but one tuber will cost you so much money. And I got, I made, I grew all of these from seed uh, with like a $2 pack. So I'm pretty happy with that. A random sunflower there. 
Here I have, oh, and that random sunflower in the back there, that tall one, and some red nasturtium. That one's really pretty. And these are Evelyn's mar marigolds. She loves those. And then, oh, and those beans over there that are not doing as great, those are Cherokee Trail of Tears black beans. Um, these are blueberries and just some flowers Matt got for me. Here's my tomatoes. And everybody said it was too cool out here to grow tomatoes and that I wouldn't be successful. Well, y'all tell me what you think. I think they were wrong. I think they were wrong, wrong, wrong. So I've got all kinds. And back there is a wax pepper. I'm gonna pickle those. And then there I've got a chocolate bell pepper. Um, that's my little okra plant. Now, multiple people said you will not successfully grow okra, but I have to tell you this little plant, I mean, it's, it's growing a lot and it grows very quickly. So we'll see. We'll see. And then here I have, these are called, I believe this is somewhat of a misnomer, but they're called dwarf dazzler red cosmos. Well, they're definitely cosmos, but they aren't very dwarfing and they're, uh, pink. So I don't know why they're called Dwarf Dazzler Red, but they're very pretty. And they're, as you can see, extremely prolific. I mean, Billy comes out here and he'll just rip all the flowers off. And then two days later, it's covered in flowers again. More potatoes. And I planted these with straw in this random like basket thing. And it's worked really well. More potatoes. And then here's this kind of just a random hodgepodge. Um, cause these beds were here when I, when we moved in and they're not very well planned. So I kind of just put, have stuck random things here. I had a ton of peas here, but I pulled them back to only a few, you know, for the kids to pick out here and there as they want to. I've got some cantaloupe here that I'm going to grow up this trellis. I'm going to tie pantyhose to them and tie them to here so that when they are ripe, they don't fall off. And these are little delicata winter squashes that are doing surpri surprisingly well. Where are the girls? They're cleaning their room. All right. Sorry, Mac was talking to me. More potatoes. And then some random tomato plant. That's a cherry tomato for the kids. I've let some beets go to seed. I'm letting some carrots go to seed because those are all some of our favorite things. And this particular variety of carrot, I wonder if I have one I could pull up and show you here. I might, uh, yes, so this is a little little one. I'll give it to our bunny, but it's a really beautiful variety. It starts very purple, and then as it goes down, it gets um, to like a yellow, and then it becomes like a creamy white, and it's very sweet. It tastes really good. Um, and so I'm letting the rest of these go to seed. And then back here, I have some cucumbers that are so slow agonizingly slow but it's because we've just now started getting heat so they have doubled in size in the last week back here i was gonna try to grow um winter squash but i didn't realize how shaded it was uh at the peak of summer back here in the in the fall and spring it was actually very sunny back here but now it's quite shaded so anyway you live and learn no big loss. Um, I might end up uh, bringing one of my pots that has some winter squashes in it back here just to somewhat since it's they're already established, you know, and just see what they do. But anyway, so that is my garden in late June in the Pacific Northwest. And you know, it's it's not as mature as it would be in North Carolina. Or, or, you know, Alabama or anywhere, you know, in the southeast. But I'm pretty proud of it for here. I've worked hard. I don't have any special tools. No machinery, no equipment. Everything I've done, I've just done with a shovel. And uh, I don't have a tiller or any of that. So I think all that considered, I'm doing pretty good. And uh, I'm going to pick that bean.